We now go over to Dan Roberts. The Good evening, fans, and welcome to the Delta Center for game number five of the NBA Finals with Larry Dunn. Welcome everyone to Game 5 of the NBA Finals with Coach Mike Fratello, Clark Kellogg, and David Aldridge. I'm Kevin Harlan. A lot to talk about as we get set to go. First and foremost, Mike, Michael Jordan apparently suffering from serious flu-like symptoms. Yeah, there was a real question whether or not he'd even take the court here. But in a crucial Game 5, there's no way Jordan's sitting out. It's just a matter of how much it'll affect him. And the Bulls had only lost two games total, Clark, in the previous three rounds before dropping the last two here in Salt Lake City. Uh, so the Jazz have them on the ropes, it would seem. Yeah, you're right, Kevin. You think about it. Chicago's won four titles since 91, and they've never had to go the distance in the series. I mean, if they can't find a way to stop Utah's momentum here, the Bulls will, for the first time, need seven games if they're going to get another ring. So taking the floor for the Bulls, it'll be Ron Harper and Michael Jordan in the backcourt. Scotty Pippen and Dennis Rodman man the forward spots. And at center, Luke Longley. For the Jazz, John Stockton will be at the point with Jeff Hornacek at the two. In the front court, we have Brian Russell, Carl Malone in the center, Greg Ostertag. And guys, I think it's already safe to say Jordan does not have his usual energy tonight. Six to shoot. Back to Malone. And the layup is good after a nice lead pass. Boy, seeing Stockton work the pick and roll, that's the thing of beauty. So good at working passes around defenders in these sets. Jordan's shot is off. Clark with Michael Jordan clearly not feeling well. You have to wonder how many minutes he'll be able to play in this one. And Kevin, you know with Michael Jordan, he never wants to come out of the game ultra competitive. And yet Phil Jackson may be in a position where he has to make a tough decision. I mean, that's part of what a coach has to do. Sometimes you have to rescue a player from himself. But Jordan never wants to come out, does he? No, no, he wants to go the full 48 minutes. And of course, Coach, all eyes on Michael Jordan as we try to get a sense of how his illness is affecting him. Didn't take long to find out, Kev. Once he gets a few minutes under his belt, we'll see if he has the energy to keep going. Yes, sir. You know, the separator with Jordan from other guys is his drive. That's obvious in my mind. He wants to win more than most anybody else out there on the floor. Stockton passes to Malone. Over Longley. And it's Malone missing. Well, there wasn't much there in terms of defensive pressure. I'm sure he'd like another crack at that shot. Takes the three. No good from Jordan. That might as well be a layup if you give him that much space. You have to do a better job of taking away space from him, especially when he's lining up in a three. Here's Stockton. And no good. Trying to use the glass. And Clark, after a few quiet games to start the series, John Stockton's been sensational since the series has come back to Salt Lake. I think you got to attribute some of that to playing at home. Good home cooking. You know, we always talk about John Stockton's assist, but in these finals, his defense has been as good as his passing. It has. Here's Malone. The Jazz again can't hit it. And so Jordan will bring it up for Chicago. Jordan refusing to make his team carry the load, finding another basket. From the tip, this team has flexed its muscles and shown its dominance. What a start, particularly on the offensive end. Malone sets the pick for Stockton. And there's the pass to Malone. And plenty of contact on the shot, so two free throws coming up. And there's the call. Chicago the foul. You know, it's really tough to go up against Malone because he's so big and strong, which is why the defense oftentimes is forced to foul him. And coach for Scottie Pippen, the effects of his foot injury, you can see, are still lingering. Yeah, he hasn't been as explosive as we're used to. He's been in more of a post-up role for them in the past few games. Catching up now on the changes for Chicago. Huntington comes in for Luke Long. And Kerr's subbed in for Harper. Jordan with the bucket. 
jumping all over them right from the tip off they now have a double digit advantage they look like the more confident team so far this is why they've grabbed such a substantial lead so fast timeout is called first of the game for the Jazz and the Jazz making a change here Anderson's checked in and here in the first quarter with a little over three and a half minutes played Stockton against Kerr. Malone sets the pick for Stockton. The kick out to Anderson. Shot clock at six. Back to Stockton. Nice ball movement by Utah. Russell, no luck. Chicago leading by 12. And with Jordan under the weather, you have to think it will affect his defense the most. He just doesn't have the energy to go full speed at both ends of the floor. Yeah, you know, Mike, I, I agree with you. That's what it seems like to me. He'll have to conserve that energy and pick his spots. And as much as the Bulls need his scoring, I think he'll have to go all out at the offensive end. Count it good. Trust Doctor to make smart play calls like this one, using the pick and roll to get himself free for a high-quality shot. And they double up Jordan. And stolen by Stockton. Russell with it. He's picked up by Pippen. Russell passes to Malone. Back to Russell. That shot is off. Great D that time from Jordan. Here's Chicago. They're on an 18 to 6 run. Basket counts. Jordan's got 20 points. Right from the start, they set the tone and were the more dominant team. I love how they've looked right from the tip. Doing an amazing job building this lead. Turning defense into offense. Yep, he had no doubt. Did he, Clark? He was going to take it all the way. Love the activity defensively, leading to points. And one thing the Bulls need to do tonight is a better job at the free throw line. They only got to the line 12 times in game four, and they missed seven of those 12 shots. And you know, Coach, that was a huge difference in the ball game. A close game like that, missing that many free throws, that's a problem. The Jazz did play aggressive D, but they didn't really pay for that aggressive defense. I expect we'll see more of the same tonight. And the foul called on Michael Jordan. That is his first foul of the game. So Utah going with an almost entirely new group here. Foster's checked in for Ostertag. Carr comes in for Carl Malone. Morris is checked in for Russell. And Isley subbed in for Stockton. And Chicago also making a switch. Caffey's checked in. Pass to Carr. Here's Isley. Another miss by Utah. Well, they looked okay with him taking that shot from mid-range, and he didn't do anything to change their mind. Jordan with the bucket. Tremendous strength there from Jordan. Knows he's going to get hacked inside. Finishes through it. On the wing, Morris. Can they get it? The shot, no good. We're at the end of the first quarter. And what a blowout already in this one. The Bulls on top, running a And we're back for the start of the second quarter. It's game five of the NBA Finals. Bull star Michael Jordan still in distress with flu-like symptoms. And I'll say, I don't think you could get a louder crowd than we have in Utah here tonight. So we're stocked in on the bench. Here's who's on the floor for Jerry Sloan. They've got Morris. Foster is out there with Antoine Carr. Then there's Hornacek. And it's Isley in at the point. Isley the pass to Carr. On the wing, Morris. Jeff Hornacek on the wing. Down to five on the shot clock. The rebound by Jordan. Jordan's got rebound number nine now. What an effort here tonight. You're right about these fans. The Jazz crowd is sensing what an opportunity this could be. Kevin, they sure are. It's an intense place to play. There's no denying that. And with a chance to take a 3-2 lead in the series, these fans have it turned up full throat. Yeah, top volume. They are wild. Yep. Bulls making a switch here. Two coaches checked in. You know, Mike, it's amazing to see the performance Jordan is putting on here. Clearly not at full strength, but still getting it done. That's the kind of competitor he is. Remember, this is the NBA Finals. If MJ had a play on a broken leg, he'd probably still be out there. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> and stolen by Jordan. 
In transition, here come the Bulls. Jordan's running. And it's Jordan with the jam. Taking the flu into consideration, Jordan has been tremendous so far in this one. Here's Isley. He's been patient so far. Nothing on the scoreboard yet. Hornacek outside. We're about a minute and a half into the second quarter now. It's deflected and stolen by Longley. Here's Jordan. And that one, good. Jordan's got nine points in the quarter. Nice work, and they are getting it done at both ends. And building on this lead. They're playing a pretty complete game. And a great job to get that angle on a tremendous drive. He made that drive look easy, but that had a high degree of difficulty. Carr sets a screen. Here's Isley. Pass to Carr. Over Kukoc. Carr, no good. And it's hard to imagine a player performing as well as Jordan under such tough circumstances. And with that, Jordan matches his 38 points in game two. What a performance. Passes it to Carr. Hornacek passes to Carr. Cloak loose. Nice ball movement by Utah. Just five to shoot. Here's Hornacek. Got a hand on it. Hard to shoot over seven foot two. Longley getting all of that one. And Mike in the battle between Michael Jordan and Carl Malone, two of the greats ever. Jordan has dominated so far. Each team leans on those guys for the bulk of their scoring. And tonight, Jordan's taking the mailman to school. Well, if we've learned one thing, Clark, over the years, it's that Michael Jordan can rise to any occasion. That's exactly right, and it's impossible for me to explain the kind of energy it takes to do what Michael Jordan's doing. And to do it when you're sick, like he is, it seems virtually impossible, but I do know this, Kevin, there are many times when players have not felt their best and yet played their best. I think psychologically and subconsciously, you rise to another level of concentration, which helps you. I know you and I are glued to this one. Yeah. What a power surge by these guys. They can't miss. Literally, what a stretch. Hornacek outside. To the inside. Up and in on the way up. Hornacek's got his first two points. No way can you overstate how important this game is. I mean, the Bulls have only trailed in the finals once throughout the Jordan era. To the paint, here's Kukoc. That drops and it comes off an assist from Jordan. In a way, Jordan is your point guard. He's the initiator. Coach, they're ice cold on the offensive end. Well, something has to change. On the wing, Morris. Jordan against Hornacek, who's back up. And the layup is up and in. Hornacek's got his second basket. Nimble play by Hornacek on the glass, snatching the ball and putting it right back up. One thirty-one left now here on the second. The pass to Kukos over Carr, and the Bulls tack on two more. And Mike, if the Jazz pull this game out, the Bulls will be under pressure they're not used to. True, but this is a tough team to rattle. Even if they do go down 3-2, I don't think they'll be easy to put away. I would agree with you. Here's Isley, defended by Pippen. Isley, the pass to Morris. Here's Foster. From outside, off the mark. Now the Bulls with it. Their defense has only allowed four points in the quarter. That pushes Jordan to a series high for scoring. And while dealing with the flu on top of everything else, we may never see another game like this. Hornacek outside. Pass to Carr. Back to Hornacek. No good there. And the Bulls going the other way now. Pass to Jordan. Four seconds separating the shot and game clocks. And here we go. Fast break. Jordan's got it. And it's Kukoc with the jam. Starting to pull out ahead off the back of some terrific offense. 
They are firing on all cylinders, aren't they? Oh, I think it stops when they're playing with this much energy. And the foul called on Michael Jordan. That's foul number two for him. Substitution on the court. Stockton against Harper. Stockton outside. They need this. And the last second attempt doesn't fall. As a defender, Jordan just dogs you. He never backs off, never gives you room to breathe. And so it's Michael Jordan making things happen for the Bulls. This has been a remarkable game for him offensively. Anytime you get over the 40-point mark, it's been a special. I'm Kevin Harlan alongside Mike Fratello, Clark Kellogg, and David Aldridge. We're ready for the second half here in Game 5 of the NBA Finals. And so it's Pippen with it. He brings it up for the Bulls. How about this Utah crowd? They get extremely loud. Remember back in game four, Phil Jackson had to wear earplugs. So starting the second half, here's who Phil Jackson has on the floor. Pippen is out there with Rodman. Then there's Harper. Then there's Longley. And it's Jordan in at the two. Here's Hornacek. Fires from 14. And that's collected by Longley. And Mike, talking about the atmosphere in here right now, it couldn't get any louder. Well, it's the last game of the year in Salt Lake and maybe the biggest game in Jazz history. These fans are going to do their part for sure. Yeah, they're going crazy. Stockton draws the double. Malone outside. Passes it to Russell. Down low. Stockton kicks to Malone. Clock is at three. Over Jordan. And it's Malone missing. On defense, the Bulls' biggest golden eye, Clark, was keeping Stockton in check. And uh, so far, they've been able to do just that. Well, it's clear Stockton is the hub of the wheel, Kevin. We all know that. And the Bulls doing a really good job to limit his penetration, clogging up the passing lanes, and really make everything uncomfortable for Stockton. They are. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. And I like when Stockton looks to score because at times it makes the defense get over aggressive. The Jazz have been perfect at the line so far, albeit just two for two. And Stockton drops them both. Third quarter of basketball, about a minute and a half in. A nice shot by Jordan. Firing on all cylinders right now. Jordan is showing no mercy and getting any shot he wants. Malone sets the pick for Stockton. Kicks it out to Hornacek. That three off the mark. Now the Bulls with it. They've only allowed two points so far here in the second half. Coming out of halftime, they're on an absolute tear. And I don't know what was said in that locker room, but it's working. Stockton passes to Hornacek. And here's Malone. The eight-footer. And he hits the jump shot. Malone's got six points. And I think the question marks about Michael Jordan's health, our coach, have been answered by now. From everything we're hearing, what he's doing is amazing. This is a guy who might need an IV. And still, he's out there tearing the Jazz up. Unbelievable. Russell passes to Hornacek. To the middle. And stolen by Longley. Here's Pippen. Here he goes. And then Pippen slams it in. Boy, that's major force and ferocity by Scottie Pippen on that slam. No messing around with that one. And I believe David talked to Jerry Sloan about Jordan's condition. D.A., what he's saying? Yeah, Kevin, I talked with Coach Sloan as he came out for the third quarter, and he wasn't interested in talking about Jordan's condition at all. He said, I don't care how he's feeling physically. All I know is mentally, he's as intense as I've ever seen him. And he stressed to his players, we have to match Jordan's intensity ourselves if we want to win this game. Guys, back to you. David, thanks. Mike, sounds like Jordan has the Jazz worried. 
even in his current physical state. They should be. <laughs> even when Jordan's body is not right, he's never going to lose intensity or his will to win. Jerry Sloan knows that. He sure does. He's a smart guy, isn't he? He is. Another one falls for Chicago. He is money from there. Jordan is so comfortable operating for mid-range. Clark, their biggest problem so far, taking care of the ball. Yes, exactly right, Kevin. I mean, they've made some outstanding plays, but way too many turnovers as well. Here's Stockton. And it's Harper with the rebound. You expect to get two points there. A little unlucky for them. Sticking to the basics. Hey, the fundamentals never go out of style. No reason to risk the fast break on a showboat shot. Absolutely agree. Just take those easy points when you can get them. We thought this game could come down to who does more, Coach, Jordan, or Malone. And it's been a one-sided fight. Jordan's been the bigger presence by far. MJ may be sick, but he isn't going to let that stop him. Uh-uh. Just three to shoot. Here's Russell with the three. Nice D from Pippen. And it's the Bulls with the ball. Their defense has only allowed six points in the second half. Way to punch it, Scottie Pippen. The athleticism, impressive. Pippen's gone three for three from the floor. They want to break this scoring drought, Mike. Well, they've had a lid over the basket for a while now. Indeed. And there's the call on Michael Jordan. That's his third foul of the game. Anderson, he's checked in for the Jazz. Chicago also making some changes. Caffey, he's checked in for Longley. Kukoc comes in for Scotty Pippen. And it's Brown in for Ron Harper. Malone kicks to Russell. Brown against Stockton. Will it go? Rodman with the rebound. It's Rodman with the ball for the Chicago Bulls. A shot by Jordan, no good. There's 49 seconds left in the third. Anderson with the ball. He's picked up by Jordan. And they double up Jordan. The pass to Kukoc. Fires the three. That drops and it comes off an assist from Jordan. Kukoc has got 13. How about the shot selection of Tony Kukoc? A threat to sink the three ball. You got to chase him off of that line. Anderson outside. On the wing, Malone. Over Rodman. Malone, no luck. They desperately need something to fall. Well, they're on the wrong side of a big run. Never a good feeling. Jordan finds Rodman. And Tennis Rodman with the slam. That's on the defense there. Got to push Rodman farther away from the rim. Here's Malone, and the jam by Carl Malone. A well-timed feed was the catalyst for that bucket. That's how you set someone up for success. And at the end of the third quarter, a huge lead in this one may already have been decided. Rolls out front, running away with it. And we're coming right back. Be sure to stay with us as we get started for the fourth quarter. Welcome back for the fourth quarter of this pivotal game five. With Clark Kellogg, Mike Fratello, and David Aldridge, I'm Kevin Harlan. Michael Jordan still toughing it out despite his illness. And a great bounce back game for Jordan after a shaky performance in game four. So is Stockton on the bench. Here's who's on the floor for Jerry Sloan. Anderson is out there with Isley. Then it's Morris. Then there's Antoine Carr. And it's Keith in at the five. Well, time pass, and he goes straight to the bucket for the layup. Keith's got his first basket of the night. This is how you execute the pick and roll. Keith slashing to the right spot. And it's stunning, Clark, to think that Jordan could have this kind of game in his condition. You know, he's shown us in the past how he can rise to any occasion, but he missed 16 shots in game four. To see him tough it out and actually raise his game, remarkable. It is remarkable in every way. And stolen by Jordan. And here we go. The Bulls fast break. Here's Brown. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. This is definitely an area Brown wants to improve. He contributes in other ways on the floor, though. The first one falls.
Dan Brown drops them both. 60 seconds off the clock here in the fourth. Floats one. The shot's good for Meisler. And so here is Chicago. Here's Jordan. And slam dunk by Jordan. Jordan's got a lot of flash to his game. A terrific guard. Loves getting tricky with his ball handling and creating shots for himself. Pass to Carr. About a minute and a half into the fourth quarter now. He can't get it to go. It's Jordan on the wing. He's covered by Anderson. Shot left block. Another one falls for Chicago. At six foot six with his crazy hops, Jordan could be a problem down low. Isley the pass to Morris. We're about two minutes into the fourth quarter in this one. Here's Isley. He's covered by Brown. And Anderson has it in the corner. Carr the pass to Isley. Some solid defense from Brown. You know, it's just incredible, isn't it? For all the bad news, Mike, we've heard about Jordan's condition. He is still in complete command of this game. MJ is such a motivated player. As strange as it sounds, maybe this flu gave him some inspiration because we're seeing him at his best. And you know, because you've called all of his biggest games. Here's Isley, pass to Carr. Yep, that one goes in there. Fantastic work by Carr. Getting the ball in a good spot and going into attack mode. Jordan high post, working on Anderson. Brown finds Jordan. The turnaround, Jay. The shot's good. Brown making the play. Jordan's got 10 points in the quarter. They're not just on fire. Nothing is getting in their way on offense. It's practically supernatural. The defense is trying everything. Anderson outside. Passes to Keith. The rebound by Jordan. Jordan's got 14 rebounds tonight going after. And two free throws coming up, unable to get that one to go with all the contact. And you can't allow Michael Jordan to get inside positioning. Once you do, you pretty much have to foul. Free throw good, Jordan. Foster's checked in for Antoine Carr. And so Jordan nails both of them. Here's Isley. They need to find a high percentage shot, Clark, to regain some of that confidence. I think they've gone too long without seeing one go down, and that begins to mess with your psyche. Chicago with the ball. So far in the fourth quarter, they've allowed just six points. It's Jordan with the drive, and Jordan throws it down. You know, once Jordan makes his move to the basket, he has no intention of stopping which makes it hard to slow his progress. And the pass to Isley. 153 left in the fourth quarter. Morris outside. Shot high post. Chicago grabs the miss. Defense backing off there, knowing the mid-ranger is a low percentage line. And here's Brown outside. The shot missing. So Utah will take it the other way. Anderson against Jordan. Anderson passes to Foster. Here's Isley. Keefe with a screen on Brown. The Jazz need to get off a shot here. Jacks up a three. The Jazz again can't hit it. Here's Chicago. The fadeaway, and he makes that one. Interesting use of the fadeaway, but hey, it worked. Coach Rotello, a chance here to stop the bleeding. They need to do something to put an end to this run. Jazz passing it around. Here is Keith. Pass to Anderson. Here's Isley. 
A three-pointer off the mark. Well, not the most reliable from long distance. They practically dared him to shoot that one. And Jordan throws it down. And this run has helped seal the win. Give them credit for executing down the stretch. Nice work. About seven seconds separating the shot and game clocks. Deflects the pass. And the shot goes down. And Jordan is simply amazing at finishing through contact. Doesn't matter what you throw at him or who, he finds a way to score. Here's Isley. He's covered by Brown. And now, Mike, the Bulls just one win away from their second straight NBA title. And you have to think this series is theirs for the taking. I don't think Utah can go into Chicago and win two straight. It'll be a tough task, Clark, to say the least. Assuming Michael Jordan is back at full strength, Kevin, it very well could be an impossible.